So as I said, informed consent means the interviewee freely agrees to speak to you and has the information he or she needs to make that decision. To obtain informed consent, follow these seven steps. Number one, you need to clearly identify yourself and any affiliation that you might have. For example, hi, my name is Rose Paris Richter. I work for the Human Rights in Iran Unit, which is a research-based project at the City University of New York. Number two, tell your interviewee the goal of your research and inform them about what you plan to do with the information. For example, I'm writing a report on the treatment of juveniles in the Iranian criminal justice system. It will be published online in Farsi and English, and I'm submitting it to the UN. Number three, ask them if they have any questions about who you are and what you're doing, such as, do you have any questions for me about who I am, who I work for, or what I'm doing? Number four, often you'll be interviewing someone who is incredibly vulnerable. They may want you to help them with an asylum application, raise the profile of their case, or help them seek justice. As a human rights reporter, you're not in a position to provide those things, no matter how hard that may sound. So you might want to say something like, unfortunately, I can't help you with your court case. But what I can do is document and share your story with international bodies so that more pressure can be put on the government to reform its juvenile justice policies. Number five. You need to make sure you assess the implications and consequences of the interview for the interviewee. Such as, your safety is my main concern, so it's really important that we go through any risk you might face as a consequence for speaking to me about what happened to you. Can you please tell me if there are any things that you're worried about? I don't want to pressure you into doing something you don't feel comfortable with. Number six, it's also important that you ask the interviewee how they want to be identified in your report. Make sure that you cover all the information by asking something like, to make sure you feel safe and secure throughout this process, and once the report is public, let's discuss how you would like to be identified in the report I'm writing. Would you feel comfortable with me using your real name, age, and location? If not, then that's okay. Your safety is my main priority, so let's discuss what you would feel most comfortable with. I always want you to remember that if there is something that you said in this interview that you don't want me to include, you can say so at any time. Number seven, last but not least, you need permission to document the interview and the interview must agree to your specific documentation method, whether this is written notes, audio, video, or some combination of all of them. For example, thank you for agreeing to talk to me about this issue. It's really important that you know exactly what this report I'm writing is about and how it will be used. I know I've explained a bit about what I'm working on before, but to make sure that you know exactly what it is that we're doing, can you please read through this form I've made for you that clearly explains what the report is about, how it will be published, and distributed. If you have any questions about any of the conditions or taking part in this, please feel free to let me know. For instance, if you want to take part and, but only remain anonymous, that's okay. We'll ensure your identity is not revealed. Once you've read through the document, you can please let me know if you're happy to continue. As you can see, obtaining informed consent might take anywhere from 2 to 20 minutes, sometimes even longer. But it is your ethical responsibility to make sure the interviewee is fully aware of what he or she is assisting you with and any related risks to their privacy or security.